Real news for Americans 50 plus. This is Emeritus News Channel. Um, well, hello. Um, today, uh, what I want to do is give you an update on what's going on with the disease, what's going on with our vaccination program, and address a few of the issues or reservations that we've been hearing about vaccine. And then, of course, Dr. Fauci is going to talk a little bit more about the clinical trial results. Um, influenza is here. The H1N1 virus is in virtually the entire country. And unfortunately, we are seeing more illness, more hospitalizations, and more deaths each week from flu. Virtually all of the virus that's circulating right now is the H1N1 2009 virus. Uh, flu is widespread in 37 states. That's up from 27 states last week. Um, unfortunately, 19 more pediatric deaths from influenza got reported to us this past week. So we are now up to um, 76 children having died from the 2009 H1N1 virus. To put that in context, the past three years, the total pediatric influenza deaths ranged from 46 to 88. So we've already had 76 children dying from the 2009 H1N1 virus, and it's only the beginning of October. Of course, the flu season often will last all the way to May, and so it's very early for us to predict exactly what's going to happen in the weeks and months ahead. Um, it's pretty certain that flu will be with us going forward and that being uh, prepared to protect ourselves will be critical. It's hard for us to know how many waves we're going to have in any one area this fall or going into the winter and spring. We do know that some places that had outbreaks last spring are seeing increases in disease right now. Um, so we know that even in places that were hard hit with the H1N1 virus last spring, at most 5 to 10 percent of people were ill with the disease. Even if many people were infected uh, without having any symptoms, we still think that the vast majority of people in a given community are vulnerable or susceptible to this virus. And of course, vaccination is the best way to protect yourself or those you love from, from influenza. Our vaccination efforts are ongoing, and there's been a lot of talk this week about them. Um, we began the first vaccinations Monday, October 5th, and Many more have occurred since then. Expect to see variability, community to community, state to state. These early doses are being used in targeted, focused ways that make the most sense given what's available. As of today, all states and the District of Columbia have placed orders for the H1N1 influenza vaccine. As of Thursday, there were 6.8 million doses available to be ordered by the states. Um, 3.7 million doses had been ordered by the states. Um, it's, of course, important to recognize that it takes some time between when vaccine becomes available for order, when it's ordered, and then how long it takes to process, package, and, and ship it. And it's really um, snapshots in time that we're talking about. Um, going forward, what we expect to be doing each week is giving you updates on the influenza vaccination effort with the H1N1 vaccine. Um, starting next Friday, we'll be posting state-specific data. We had hoped to be able to post that today, and unfortunately, we just aren't ready. We really want to make sure we're accurate and right on the information. So that'll be starting next Friday. But starting next Tuesday and Friday, we'll be providing updates on the totals of uh, vaccinations that are at various steps along the way to reaching communities. And then every Friday, we'll be providing the state-specific data. So I'm sorry that we aren't able to provide that more detailed look today. A, a critical thing to know is that there's more vaccine coming online on a regular basis, more vaccine being ordered, and gratefully, I can say, more vaccine being used now um, on a daily basis. Um, it's important for the public to know that your local public health department or your state public health department is going to be the best source of information about what is happening near you over the weeks ahead when more vaccines available in the communities about where those vaccination clinics will be offered or what sites might be having vaccine that you can take advantage of. 
Uh, we're right now in that early process, smoothing out the wrinkles. The next two to three weeks, we do expect, will lead to widespread availability. Um, this week, of course, we mainly had the, um, the nasal spray um, in use. We're expecting next week that the injectable vaccine will be out there in some places available to start um, uh, vaccinations. Um, we know that the states and, and local health departments are working hard to ramp up, and we really appreciate the um, community support we've been getting for that. Um, I want to mention a little bit about the seasonal flu vaccine. Of course, we are in the midst of vaccinating against seasonal flu viruses as well, and there have been a few wrinkles in that process as well. Um, we may see an, an increase in seasonal flu viruses in the months ahead. We haven't yet seen that, but it's very, very early. We would expect them, you know, December to May is the usual season, and we really don't know how much seasonal flu disease we'll have this year. Vaccination is happening. 77 million doses of seasonal flu vaccine have been distributed. That's up about 7 million from last week's report. That's more than we ever have had by this time of year, I believe. But still we know that some providers, some communities, some health departments don't have as much vaccine as they had ordered or would like to have. And so we just ask for people's patience. I'm sorry about the frustration that, that folks have, and I know this is, this is challenging. I do think there's time to get the seasonal flu vaccine and that more is going to be coming out regularly. Um, so this is another one of those issues that we just um, will be working together on. There have been a number of reports about um, people uh, people's questions about the H1N1 vaccine, and it's a really good time for us to address some of those qu questions. Some people have reservations, aren't really sure about this vaccine. So I want to tell you a few things to help um, answer some of the common questions we've been getting. You know, vaccine against flu is the best way to protect yourself from influenza and those around you. It can protect you from getting this virus, and it can also reduce the chances that you'll spread it. Vaccination will not prevent every case of flu. Vaccines are not 100% protective, but they are the most protective intervention that we have. Um, as a physician and a public health expert, it was really exciting on Monday to be in Memphis and be able to see the first uh, nasal spray vaccines being offered and healthcare workers lining up to get vaccinated. At that children's hospital, Le Bonheur Children's Hospital, healthcare workers had seen a huge increase in ill children with the H1N1 virus and many children in the intensive care unit and tragically a few deaths. And it was heartening to see the nurses and doctors line up to be among the first to be protected. I know that not everybody feels as comfortable as the nurses and doctors at Le Bonheur in getting the H1N1 vaccine, but I want to share with you my thoughts about this. This isn't a new vaccine. The H1N1 vaccine is being made exactly the same way as the seasonal flu vaccines are made. It's using the same processes, the same oversight. We haven't taken any shortcuts with it. Um, it's basically a vaccine made against a different flu virus than the three viruses that are in the seasonal flu vaccine. And for instance, in future years, this same particular virus might be in the seasonal flu vaccines that we offer. The flu vaccines that we use that are produced exactly the same way with the same manufacturers, we have a very good history with them. About 100 million doses were given out last year and 100 million doses the year before, and there's a very strong safety record for them. But this doesn't satisfy everybody, and as a doctor, I have something of a communication dilemma. I can tell you that I'm very comfortable, in fact, looking forward to receiving the H1N1 vaccine when it becomes available for people like me. But I know that everybody needs to make their own decisions, and I really respect the need for people to make decisions, the best decisions about the health of their family and themselves. And so what we're committed to here at CDC is getting you good information that you can use to make those decisions. I can tell you that um, there are a lot of rumors out there and we're trying to address them, but based on everything I know right now, we're expecting a very good safety track record for the H1N1 vaccines. And it's a good time for you to get the questions you have answered by the people that you trust. To, before I turn things over to Dr. Fauci, I just want to say that unfortunately we do expect more illness, including hospitalizations and deaths, to be occurring in the weeks ahead including in these vulnerable groups like children and pregnant women. It's been a busy and exciting first week, though, of our vaccination program. It's just the beginning. There's a lot more work to do, and I think we're really all in this together.